What's up guys, my name is Daniel McKenna. I am the captain of the Hype Squad here at Thrive 15. Today, we have Clay Clark sitting down with attorney at law, Wes Carter. And we're talking about wills versus trusts. What's the difference? Here's the deal. Eventually, you will die. And we don't really like to talk about it and we don't really like to get into the details, but eventually it's gonna happen. And what you've worked for your entire life, you probably wanna have some say of where that stuff goes. So you need to know about wills, you need to know about trusts, and you need to know what's the difference, what do I work with, what do I need to do? Here at Thrive 15, we believe that knowledge without application is meaningless. Unless you actually take the time to learn something today and apply it to your life or your business, Watching this video is going to be more meaningless than a monkey on stilts. Although that would be hilarious. I'd like to see that. Thrive15.com and Wes Carter are providing general legal information to provide thrivers like you with a basic framework of the terms, concepts, and scenarios found within the legal system of the United States. If you are a human who is watching this video, you should seek the legal advice of a local attorney before making a legal decision. If you are watching these videos from any country outside of the United States or from any planet outside of the planet Earth, you need to seek the wise legal counsel of a local attorney who better understands the legal complexities found within your country, planet, state, or city. For instance, in some states including California, Florida, Nevada, Alaska, and Hawaii, a motorist can be cited for driving too slowly. Other states do not have this law, although Clay has actually been pulled over for driving too slow within the state of Oklahoma, which pretty much never happens. Wes Carter is a great American and a beautiful man, but Thrive15.com and his partners are in no way legally liable for any fashion statements that he makes, verbally or just by admitting fashionable awesomeness simply by entering into a room. Wes Carter is not related in any shape or form to Clarence Carter, recording artist, John Carter, entrepreneur and artist, or Joe Carter, and will be baseball great. Wes Carter, how are you, sir? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing awesome. I've got this uh, orange highlighter today. It's awesome. Feeling colors. great. I've got, I've got this, I've got this pen, i got the pen, i got this, i got both of them. Ready to go. So, Catches my time. Well, it does. It does. You, if you want to have it over here, you Color can. Color coordinated. Okay. Well, hey, we're going to talk about wills and trusts today. Okay. And uh, uh, specifically, kind of wills versus trusts and, okay. and kind of how that all works. But before we do, there's a lot of people all over the world asking the same question. They're asking. They're, they're wanting me to ask you this. And so okay. I'm, who, am I, who am I to stand in the way of the thrivers who want to know this right. information? They're saying, legally speaking... Are you in any way, shape, or form related to Hurricane Reuben Carter, an American middleweight boxer who was wrongly convicted of murder and later freed via a petition of habeas corpus after spending almost 20 years of his life in prison? I was not. I am not. Am not. Sounds a little bit murky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we... We'll move on. Uh, we might have got married or divorced along the lines, but no. Do no, you want to I plead the fifth? So. I understand you can. Yes. Not in this space, but in court. I don't want to offend the, the Carter family. Okay, so, okay. All right. So now, uh, uh, we'll hop into it now. So today we're talking about wills and trusts, but before we can get into that, I'm going to read off the definitions of each one, and then okay. I'm going to get some clarification from you as to what it means in common sense terms that common folk, like myself, can understand. Sure. So, I define, uh, I define a will as being a document on which a person specifies the method to be applied in the management and distribution of their estate after their death. It's a very good definition. You <laughs> yeah. Do you? Do you? Uh, I mean, do, do you? Well, tell me what this means to common folk. What is, in your mind, what is a will? Just a, a written document, uh, typed, written, depends on what kind of will it is. Uh, that says, "Here's what's going to happen to my property when I pass away. Here are my heirs." Uh, there's property left over after I name all this property. It's going to go to this kind of leftover bucket, and that's pretty much what it does. Let's say, like right now, I'm 33 years old. But I kind of sound like Mickey Mouse, yeah. and I say, I'm 33. Why do I need a will? You know, wh why do I need a will? Well, everyone needs a will. One, if you have children, it's you're going to want to name who's going to take care of your kids if something happens to you and your spouse. Uh, that's one of the most important things probably. Okay. And also, it's going to protect your family. You might be 33 and have five kids. Um, and if you were to pass away, you don't want your family to have to go to court and go through a very lengthy process, have you know, the wealthy man that you are, have all of your relatives come out of the woodwork on a piece of the pie. Can I ask you this? Is yeah. it, is it um, if I eat 100% gluten-free diet, 100% organic. I ne my, the chickens that I eat have been free range. They've uh, never actually been enclosed in a cage. Okay. I'm doing all those things. I'm doing all the, the moves to you know, extend my life. Do I still need a will? Still need a will. You could be the healthiest man in the world and get hit by a bus. <laughs> well, luckily, I stay away from buses, and I'll tell you that. So I, I obviously <laughs> don't need a will. But okay, so now we're moving on to trust. I okay. want to define the word trust. Uh, Wes, the good folks at Investopedia define a trust as a fiduciary 
relationship in which one party known as the trustor gives another party, the trustee, the right to hold the title to property or assets for the benefit of a third party, the beneficiary. Yes. What? What does that mean? Basically, it's a legal document that sets up a little pool of assets, and you put the stuff in this pool, and there's one person named or you know a group of people named as the trustees, and they're the people that watch over your property and decide according to how you set up the rules, how to give the property away or what to do with it. You hear a lot, you know, a lot of conspiracy theories. You mm -hmm. say, well, it's the Rockefeller Trust that controls the world. It's the uh, Rothschild, Rothschild Trust that controls yes. the world. What do you, what are these trusts? People say, oh, is this, these trusts. Does this mean it's like someone's created this organization and now it's been around for hundreds of years? Or walk me through this here. Yeah, it basically can live on for a very long time, but it's a piece of paper that says I'm going to create a trust and I'm going to make these rules. I'm going to put this money into this imaginary thing and here are the rules by how it's going to be distributed. Wow. Um, and so you can do it for the benefit of a charity. You can do it for the benefit of your kids. You can do it uh, where you can change it during your lifetime or that once you create it, you can't touch it again. So you, the trust lives on forever, but the human does not. Correct. Okay. That's your opinion uh, because I, I eat gluten-free and I know that I will, in fact, live longer than most trusts. So. You, you possibly can. Okay. All right.